This is the BMW i7, a brand new fully electric luxury limo. And in this video, I'm gonna be driving it, letting it drive me, watching a film in it, and showing off some of my telekinesis powers. So stay watching for 10 things you need to know about the new i7. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to buy any new car, an electric one, petrol, diesel, plug-in hybrid, whatever, make sure you head over to whatcar.com to get yourself a great deal. So the i7 is the fully electric version of the new 7th generation 7 series. In some other markets, including the US, you can get a petrol version of the 7 series, but in the UK, for the beginning at least, it's only the fully electric i7, although a couple of plug-in hybrid versions will be joining the range later. Traditionally, this car's main rivals would be the Audi A8 and the Mercedes S-Class, but you can't actually get a fully electric version of either of those cars. So actually, the main cars this is up against are the Mercedes EQS and the Tesla Model S. Now, the previous generation 7 series, or rather the facelifted version of that car in 2019, was the first BMW to feature a supersized front grille. It later found its way onto the X7 and on the 4 Series as well. It wasn't universally loved, particularly in the UK at least, but that hasn't deterred BMW because the grille on this new i7 is actually slightly bigger. This car has the chromed version. You can go for a gloss black one instead if you want, and in particular if you go for a dark paint color as well. That helps it blend in a little bit more, but whichever one you go for, this is gonna be pretty in your face, so it won't appeal to everyone. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Now, the front and the sides of the car are very square, very upright. So unsurprisingly, this isn't as aerodynamic as the Mercedes EQS, but it isn't as far behind as you might imagine. This car has a coefficient of drag of 0.24 compared with the EQS's 0.2. Now the battery in the i7 has a usable capacity of 101.7 kilowatt hours. That's pretty big, it's bigger than a battery in a Tesla Model S, not quite as big as the one in the EQS. Officially this car can't go quite as far on a full charge as either of those cars. It can do between 367 and 387 miles depending on which alloy wheels you go for and other options. But BMW actually says it's focused more on real world range rather than chasing unrepresentative official WLTP figures. So in theory, at least, this car should get closer to its claimed range than some of its rivals. And to be honest, even if you only get 300 miles on a charge, that's enough to get you from London to Newcastle with a little bit of breathing room. When you do need to charge up, you can do so using a regular seven kilowatt hour wall box. But because this car has such a big battery, that takes quite a while, around 16 hours. You can, of course, charge up much more quickly than that using a public CCS charging point from which this car can pull up to 195 kilowatts. For context, a 10 to 80% charge in this car will take around 35 minutes, so around five minutes longer than in the EQS or the Tesla Model S. But look, you can open the doors by pressing a button either on the door itself or using an app on your phone. So that's a really cool feature. And if you're worried that that's potentially a bit dangerous and the car's gonna fling its door open onto a passing cyclist or a pedestrian, then fear not because there are actually sensors all the way around. And that means that the door won't open if anyone is close by or anyone's approaching down the side. Now, traditionally luxury limos like the 7 Series are mainly used as chauffeur cars to ferry around VIPs. That's why they're really long. The new 7 Series is actually 5.4 meters long and have loads of space in the back. This new car actually has a longer wheelbase, that's the distance between the front and the rear wheels, than the old sixth generation car. And there's no long wheelbase version of this. All cars are absolutely massive. So whichever version of the i7 you go for, this is how much space you'll get in the back. There's loads of knee room and loads of headroom as well. This seat is actually set up for my driving position. I'm just over six feet tall and look, absolutely loads of space here. And actually, if you're sitting on the passenger side of the car and there's no one on the seat in front, you can slide it all the way forwards and out of the way and use it as a footrest. This car has the executive pack. Look, you can turn this into a business class style bed and you can even enjoy a massage. Standard panoramic sunroof that BMW claims is actually longer than in any rival. This car has the optional Sky Lounge Pack, so you get these LED threads through there. They look really cool. And as you might expect, all versions of the i7 get four zone climate control, which so whichever corner of the car you're sitting in, you can set the temperature just how you like it. 
but I want to show you quite possibly the coolest thing about this car, and that is a giant 31.3 inch 8K touchscreen that folds out of the headlining there. BMW calls it a theatre screen, and it's like nothing I've ever seen in a car before. Normally, you get a couple of small displays on the backs of the front headrests, whereas this, well, it's more like being in a cinema. It's got a built-in Amazon Fire TV and a 5G aerial actually on the roof up there, so you can stream TV, watch films, or perhaps even watch the What Car YouTube channel while your driver takes you where you want to go. If you're wondering how much all of this costs, well, it isn't cheap. The theatre screen is £4,000 as an individual option or £10,500 as part of the executive pack, which includes those massaging lounge seats. And if you're forking out for the screen, you'll probably also want the 40-speaker Bose & Wilkins surround sound system, which even has shakers in the seat backs for the full cinema experience. That adds an extra five and a half grand to the price. But although rear passengers have clearly been prioritised, someone has got to be sitting here driving the car. And whoever that is, it gets a really comfortable driving position, loads of adjustment, and the interior looks really cool as well, particularly if you love your bling. There's loads of glossy surfaces here, crystal as well, and this really nice touch-sensitive panel here that runs right across the face of the dashboard. And unlike some touch-sensitive panels, this one actually seems pretty responsive, so that's really impressive. These seats in this car are actually part merino wool and part cashmere. That's an option, it comes as part of the Grand Lusso pack, it's really, really expensive. You can of course have leather if you want, but as standard, BMW offers something called Veganza. That's really a fancy name for plastic, but it doesn't feel at all cheap. And you can actually have one of four different colours without paying a penny extra. There's a 14.9 inch touchscreen infotainment system that is curved towards the driver. It's very similar to the one in a BMW iX actually, but it does debut a few new features, including the theater mode, which controls that screen that we've just shown you behind. And seeing as I'm sitting here, it's probably about time we went for a drive. So the i7 has two electric motors, one on the front axle and another on the rear back there. So it's four wheel drive and together those two motors pump out 536 brake horsepower. That's a lot and it means that although this is a really big and heavy car, it's surprisingly quick. It can do 0-62 in 4.5 seconds. But the thing is, because it's so quiet in here, acceleration doesn't actually feel that savage. You're obviously aware of the scenery passing by more quickly, but it's more the experience that you get in something like a jumbo jet than a sports car. Now, admittedly, we're driving this car in the Californian desert where it barely ever rains, so the roads are really smooth, but there's hardly any road noise. Even at motorway speeds, you can speak quietly and your passengers can still hear you. And actually, you feel like you're going a lot slower than you actually are. Ride comfort is superb as well. Again, with the caveat, the UK roads are nothing like these. So the i7 is a car that really does live up to its luxury billing. And not that that many buyers of cars like this will really care, but it handles quite well too. It stays flatter through corners on country roads like this than something like an Audi A8. So you can cover ground surprisingly quickly. I wouldn't describe it as fun really, but effective, absolutely. And if you don't really want to drive yourself and your chauffeur's called in sick, you can let the i7 take care of a lot of the boring stuff itself. On the motorway, the adaptive cruise control and self-steering system will adjust the car's speed and deal with the lane positioning for you. And the i7 can even change lanes automatically when you hit the indicator. Out here in the US, you don't even need to have your hands on the steering wheel. Instead, a sensor monitors if you're looking at the road, and if it thinks you aren't, you'll get various warnings before the system finally disengages. In the UK though, current legislation means the system won't work unless it senses your hands are on the wheel. Now, BMW says the i7 will soon be offered with level three autonomy, which means the driver technically doesn't need to be involved at all. Although we have heard this before with the Audi A8 back in 2017, and different countries have different regulations covering autonomous driving anyway. In short, don't get your hopes up that you'll be able to watch a film while your i7 is doing all of the driving anytime soon. The i7 starts at around £108,000, so about the same as a Mercedes EQS, but if you go for the cheapest version, you'll miss out on some of the coolest features and most lavish interior finishes. Plus, the 19-inch alloys look very small on a car this big. Expect to spend around 130 k on a car that's been specced like the one we're driving today. 
Well, that's about it from Palm Springs today, but we will, of course, be testing the i7 against its key rivals when we get hold of one in the UK later this year. So make sure you subscribe and hit notifications so that we can let you know as soon as that video goes live. Thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a like, leave us a comment below, let us know what you think of the i7. And other than that, we'll see you next time.